<clears throat> Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So, <laughs> let's start off with Nina acting like a 12-year-old little schoolgirl, bursting up in Drew's office through the meeting to sit there and tell them, tell specifically him and the other people that was in the room about Carly hooking up with John. And, you know, both, you know, both, um, Curtis and, and, um, well, Curtis is sitting there looking like, bro, you know, I love you, but you out of pocket right now. Like, like, you way out of pocket. And, you know, Drew had that look on his face where it's like, I can't tell if he was mad at the thought of Carly just moving on so fast, or just the simple fact that she's throwing it in his face. But, you know, he's like, hey, listen, she's a grown adult. She can do what she wants. Same thing with Michael. Michael made a beeline to Carly to kind of give her a heads up about, you know, Nina just spreading lies and gossip about her once again, just like she did with Brick. Um, which, when I get to this review, when I get towards the end of this review, towards the middle, you're going to see why that's actually going to be problematic. But, um... You know, after Nina does what she does, and Curtis is like, you know, I love you, whatever, but, like, you know, you, you were pretty much wrong in this whole thing. Um, Curtis does tell Drew that, hey, you know, listen, she's hurting, so, you know, just just be easy on her. Um, why? <laughs> this chick couldn't wait to sit there and burst in his office to throw in his face that... Oh, your girl, she's talking out with somebody else already, you know, already like you didn't mean anything. And you tell him to go easy on her? Um, that's not a pocket for so many reasons, but aren't you also his friend as well? The hell? Um But you know, Drew does sit there and say, Hey, you know, listen, I, I was not gonna sit there and be in a relationship with her when Jason got back. Because he knows her history, and he's like, I'm not playing that. Now, Curtis does sit there and mention something along the lines of, you know, it does not kind of hurt. You know, you going to jail for her and everything like that. But he went to jail, like, he made the choice. Um, I thought it was the wrong choice, but he made the choice of doing that, and he just has to live with it. He's not going to sit there. I don't think that he's going to sit there and throw in her face like, yo, listen, I went to jail for you, and this is how you treat me? I mean... <laughs> would be exactly in the wrong for at least don't add her face even though it was his choice. But um yeah, so that happens. Now like I said, Michael tells um tells Carly about what Nina did at the office and everything. They talk for a little bit and then eventually Carly goes to see Jason. Now, Jason is with Diane, and he's talking about trying to buy back, you know, the um, Carly's half of the hotel. And see, so, you know, he's able to unfreeze some of his assets. And, you know, Diane's like, well, here's the thing. Even if you can, you know, even if you even if you want to do it, it doesn't mean that Carly's going to let you. She had a line of people sitting there trying to buy this chick back her old house. Now, even Nina was going to sit there and sell it back to her. And she said no. But of course, he's Jason, so he's like, you know, listen, just leave it to me. Now, you know, Diane was sitting there saying, like, did you sign some papers or whatever? My, my paralegal gave it to you. Carly walks in there with the, with the papers. And, you know, Diane, as she talks a little bit and she walks out and she smiles and she laughs, I'm like, wait, you're not... You're not upset that that <laughs> your paralegal just gave documents to this woman to, to hand your client instead of just, I don't know, maybe like not doing that. Now it's not to think, hmm, yeah, I definitely need a new assistant. No, nothing, not even a twinge of, of annoyance at the very least. Um, now... Also, I should sit there and mention, because I did sit there and say yesterday that, you know, Carly was to talk about the faults at the hotel, like the, you know, the, the service and everything like that, giving 
cold um food and showers and stuff and she does want a calling <laughs> oh my goodness see this is the definition of spreading yourself too thin so she wants a calling the hotel she's like yeah no i kind of had a couple of layoffs or whatever but i didn't expect the quality to kind of go down i was like wait, wait wait so you just assumed that you was gonna have less people cook and prep and stuff like that and just Assume that they were just gonna do just an amazing job. What is wrong with you? Like, how she talked to you when she said that? I was like, you know, I can't even sit there and give you a pass for that because you practically just let the hotel go to pretty much. And why? Because she's not trying to run Crimson at the same time as trying to run the hotel. And that, of course, that's when Diane came in there. And Diane was not there trying to, you know, deal and haggle and stuff like that and did mention. You know, trying to do the hospitality service must be a headache. You know, that day-to-day -day mundane stuff, you know, but, I mean, if you want to do it. Um, they start haggling the price, and, you know, Nina's like, I need to think about it. Now, Carly, you know, again, Carly gets to Jason, talks about the whole thing with John getting beat up and everything like that, and she thinks that Sonny did it. Um, because right now he's just acting very unhinged because, you know, he doesn't have his meds. And, you know, Jason's like, he wouldn't sit there and do that. But, again, normally he wouldn't sit there and go out there a federal agent. But because, you know, he's all like, you know, F you Jason, F you Carly, and F everyone except for Ava, which apparently is going to wind up effing at some point, but that's beside the point. He's not acting like himself, so... Um, yeah. Now, Lucy and, um, Maxie are at the shopping, Home for Heart shopping network or whatever. And, you know, they, they talk to that woman. I can't remember exactly her name. And, you know, Lucy's like, well, you know, listen, I'll pitch it or whatever. And she's like, no. You know, the, the woman's like, no, I'm not going to do it without Sasha. Because here's the thing. They had a prior conversation. I'm kind of leaving it out. They had a prior conversation about Sasha. And Maxie was not there blaming Lucy for Sasha leaving. And I'm like, that wasn't Lucy's fault. That Sasha chose to leave. Hell, Sasha did sit there and say she was thinking about leaving for a very long time. This is something that, I swear, I know people don't like Lucy. I know people don't like Lucy. But it's almost like people just forgot the prior conversation when she came in there and she said that I wasn't there thinking about already leaving for a very long time. And this is, you know, kind of a wake-up call. But at the end of the day, regardless, she chose to leave. From actually to sit there and say, well, you undermined her and this, that, and that. What are you talking about? All she said was, you don't have an edge look like you used to. You were mysterious back in the day. You don't have that. And that's all she was not there saying. All she was not there doing was laying out facts. That is the bottom line. For people to sit there and say that she undermined her in that whole conversation, um, obviously you never worked in the fashion industry or you never had a boss that was going to sit there and just be honest. I mean, yes, some bosses are very nice and, you know, they like the sugarcoat stuff, but Lucy's not one of those bosses. And if you ever worked at a job, sometimes bosses can sit there and be real, and you may think it's unprofessional because they were honest with you, but they were honest with you. So Maxie was out of pocket for even sitting there blaming Lucy for Sasha leaving. Which, by the way, Sasha is not there um, taking care of horses like, oh, I don't really like this job, I don't, you know, this job doesn't really speak to me, but, you know, my savings is not going to last forever. And yet you chose to leave this job without Snit Day getting a new one. That was that was that was actually just pretty dumb. I, I can't even be sarcastic about that. And you know you a lot more broken now because of um Gladys. <laughs> anyway, they're talking about that stuff with Sasha and the woman is like, you know, she doesn't want to let Lucy um Hosting stuff. So she leaves. Maxie and Lucy have a conversation. And pretty much what it comes down to, Maxie feels that, like, Lucy's not being a team player. 
You know, she's like, I have just as much right in this company as you. You keep talking about my company and this, this is mine and that's mine. And she finally is like, you know, are you ready? So they talk with her again. And this time, Maxi backs her up. Um, they start selling products because apparently Blaze is too good to sit there and sell products because of, um, oof, I'm so trying not to curse that, um, <sighs> I don't want to sit there and say she's a POS of a person, but she is just, ugh, stink attitude. Anyway, Blaze apparently can't, you know, she's too good to sell products. Now, Lucy's up there and she's selling it. And what Lucy's doing while she's talking about these products is that she's talking more about herself. She's talking about more herself. Oh, I hosted this. I did that. I'm a woman on the go. Blah, 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 blah. And Max is just like, Yep, and I left Crimson. Why did I leave Crimson again? Um, now, Tracy has a conversation with Brooklyn because there's one point where they talk about going to Florence and Chase selling his truck because, you know, um, Tracy is paying for the wedding. So he's like, hey, you know, let's not sell my truck. We'll go down. We'll, we'll do the perfect honeymoon and stuff like that. Brooklyn's like, I got a surprise from him. I'm actually going to sit there and buy him a new truck. Trace's like, don't do that. Because you'll be re you'll be disrespecting him. Chase is a very old school, traditional man. He likes to sit there and be the breadwinner. And, you know, it's a lot different. You know, he, he, she talks about the concept of money and how she could just buy it like that. But, you know, this is something he has to sit there and save up. Like, the perspectives is a lot different. So, you know, she tries to get her to understand, like, about one, him being traditional, even though this is the 21st century, some people are, are old school. Um, and two, just how they see money differently. That was the gist of the whole conversation. Um, now, Alexis talks about how she can't accompany Greg to the wedding, which, of course, I know Tracy's going to want him stepping in. Um, because she's going to get a law license back, or she is in the process of doing that. But she doesn't want to jinx it. You know, she doesn't even want to sit there and toast to it. And she tells Gregory about Molly's fears. I heard wanting to drink, and she doesn't get, you know, she doesn't get the uh, her law license back. Which, again, I just want to point out that you can just, dealing with, with, Nina and that gossip columnist and everything that you got to deal with as far as being in the newspaper business, well, that can make you want to drink too. So you might as well sit there and he's saying this. You might as well shoot your shot at something that you really want as opposed to you being depressed to the point where you just wind up taking a drink because you couldn't stand the edge that you had to sit there and put out. But of course, Gregory... I mean, it's, it's, I don't want to sit there and say it's cheesy because honestly, to tell you the truth, in a, in a lot of ways, you got to sit there. All right, you know what? F it. Fine. Uh, I'll sit there and be out of character for a minute. I'll be a little cheesy. Gregory, long story short, is like, you know, you, you got to go for your dreams. You know, that's, that's bravery and rah, 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 rah. <sighs> Mine's is kind of similar. In a sense, like, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself so much that it can come across as a bit cocky. But you have to believe in yourself so much. It, his thing, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. That is the bottom line. So you got to have enough belief in yourself to the point where you have other people believing in you. There. That was my cheesy moment. That's that's pretty much all you're gonna get for the entire year. So um yeah. Um the hell else wound up happening. Oh yeah, I'm gonna forget about Sasha and Cody. <laughs> There's one point where um you know again she talks about finances after she's like she can't find what she's looking for. Um she doesn't want to sit there and go back to you know, just being another pretty face and she has a lot more skills to offer and, you know, there's nothing that really piques her interest, but also her savings are starting to run very, very low. 
Um, but she should have probably thought about that before she decided to quit, but whatever. Um, Cody is just kind of there just to sit there and listen to just the vent because let's be honest, the storyline that he was supposed to wind up having, he, he was supposed to wind up having, well, that's clearly not going to wind up happening. Um, it's not going to happen now because, you know, um, he acted and plays Mac. Which is something that I was thinking about when I was at work. I was bored. Um, I was like, well, what is actually going to wind up doing with Cody's story? Like, you stop and think about it. This whole story is supposed to lead up into, you know, um, the reveal that Mac is his father. And, you know, they go through the back and forth. And, oh, man, you really, you know, you really hurt me. And you also violate the law and blah, 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 blah. So now it's just... What we have here. Um, so I wonder what they're going to want to do with that. Are they going to want to recasting? I mean, I, yeah, I know throwing out that word recast is like, oh, what? But what's third purpose is, what are you going to want to do? You know, obviously, I don't want it to be a recast of that, but what are you going to want to do with the story? You know, because like right now, it's in limbo. And I know they're going to probably sit and be like, oh, let's let's put those two together and everything like that, which they're going to wind up doing. But again, what's going to wind up going on with that story is my question. I feel like that's about it. Yeah, I feel like that's about it for the most part. But if I missed anything, um, come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm recently talking about all the shows, General Hospital, Days of My Lives, Born and Beautiful, Young and Restless. Just to let you know, depending on which title I want up putting out tonight, it is either it's General Hospital or it's The Young and Restless, I'm still going to be talking about all four. So even if I put like, because I'm honestly thinking about putting up a Y&R um, title, but I'm still going to be talking about GA stuff. Um, so I do want to even if I do want to put up a title for YNR, they're going to be talking GH and bold and days. Um, yes, if I miss anything, come to the live stream tonight. We'll sit there and talk about it. Whatever I miss, um, thoughts, opinions, we can sit there and just discuss it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video or live stream, hopefully.